Hello guys and welcome to this video. Today we are going to add enemies to the game. And um, we just want some pretty standard enemies just coming down from the top up here and then walking around. Not anything fancy or anything, just normal enemies. So we, just, we are going to create a sprite. I'm just going to call it sprite enemy. Because we need an enemy. And I'm going to make it 16 by 16 and make it like a creature with big feet like the player. Hmm. Yeah, and I know this doesn't look that great, but as I've said before, this is just for the tutorial. You can draw it as amazingly as you want to. Yeah, this just looks so beautiful. Or not. Um, yeah. And this looks a little bit like a Goomba from Mario when I look at it. Okay, I'm just going to give it some huge eyes. Yeah, and that eye was a bit different than the other one. Um, there we go. And. There we go, and then I'm going to make a walking animation, of course. And you know what, I'm just going to flip it. This is pretty much just the easiest walking animation you can make. It doesn't look that good, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, let's create SP uh, object enemy, obg underscore enemy. Um, yeah. And what we're going to start by doing is setting some variables in his create event. First of all, we have to have an um, um, image speed. We're going to set this to 0 0.5 because we do not want his uh, animation to be run that fast. When it's set to 0 0.5, it will execute um, 15 times a second, meaning that he will change image 15 times a second. And when it's set to 1, it will run at the full frame rate, rate being 30 frames per second. And uh, yeah. And we are, of course, also going to make a step event. And really, everything we have to do here in the step event is controlling the gravity because the movement left and right will not be made here in the step event. So, um, what we're going to do in here is just saying uh, we can just copy it from the player. We can go in the, into his step and find the fall code and just copy all this stuff. And there we go. So that's pretty much what we need in the step event. To make the enemy move left and right, we can just use something called H speed. H speed is pretty much just a default variable in a game maker, and the variable is just controlling how quickly he moves to the different sides. For example, if it's set to 5, he will move uh, 5 pixels every step, meaning every frame or whatever, to the left, not to the right. Um, and if it's set to minus 5, it will be to the left. So I'm just going to start by having him move to the right. So let's set it to 5. And then do so that when I'm just, yeah, I'm going to do something with the movement in here because I'm going to check if the place is not free. The exclama exclamation point is that in what it's called? I don't know. It's probably wrong. This thing is probably called something else. I don't know what it's called. It's called. It's called something. It doesn't matter. It's this thing. The yelling sign, whatever. Uh, if place is free, or if the place isn't free, x plus h speed comma y it's going to set the h speed to minus h speed and what this does is pretty much if um, if you can't move um, more to the x with the variable of h speed meaning that there is something in front of, hi front of him the way he's moving he's going to reverse his uh, h speed and go the opposite way yeah, and when you set something to minus 
it's just if, uh, if the x speed is equal to plus one it's going to be set to minus one and etc I mean it's pretty similar math uh, so you sh probably know and then um, yeah let's just spawn some enemies in the room and now my dogs are barking I just have to go and stop them <laughs> So I've put two enemies into the room and let's just start and see how they work. And as you can see they are pretty fast right now, but they work. And they can pass through each other and you know, it works pretty good. But I'm going to make them just a tiny bit slower because I think they are too fast. So I'm, that's, I'm just going to set their HP to 2 instead of 5 and maybe we should do so that they couldn't yeah, so that they can't move while they're falling yeah I'm just going to show you how we do that we're just going to oh, stop barking stupid dog that go die and stuff okay <laughs> we're just going to do so that when it's falling this is pretty much when it's falling please stop dog uh, when it's falling, it's just going to set its HP to zero. You know what? I'm just going to go and try to make that dog stop barking because it's just destroying the video. Now the dog has hopefully stopped barking. But um, what I'm going to do is Right here when it's um, it's falling, I'm just going to test if the H speed is not equal to 0, then I'm going to set it to 0. And if it's not falling, if the H speed is equal to 0, I'm just going to set the H speed back to 2. In that way, when he is falling, he won't move, but when he lands on the ground, he will start moving again. So as you can see, he is moving, and now he's moving. That's great, right? And, um, yeah. But we also have to make the enemies able to kill our player. And this can be done using a collision event. So um, we can say, if the enemy collides with the player, the game will restart. Yeah, and I'm going to add lives and stuff like that in a later episode. Right now, I'm just going to restart the game. So, as you can see, when I'll hit an enemy, I die and the game restarts. So, that's very simple. Um, yeah, next episode, we are going to add lives and make you able to kill the enemies because. Right now there's no way to kill them. And yeah. But I think that this is it for this episode because I do not want this episode to be too long. So thanks for watching and see you in the next episode. Bye guys.